There is inherent risk in wildland firefighting and accidents or injuries can occur at initial attack. Your crew members and other agency firefighters may have to depend on you to make life-saving decisions if an accident occurs. Understanding and practicing the standard operating procedures for a medical emergency on an incident is essential. The varieties of players and the range of expertise and experience of those involved, the uncertain timing and inherent dangers of wildland firefighting make knowing and practicing the standard operating procedures for a medical emergency on an incident essential. On July 25, 2008, 18-year-old National Park Service wildland firefighter Andy Palmer was fatally injured in a tree falling accident on the Eagle Fire burning on the Shasta Trinity National Forest in California. Three hours and 26 minutes after he was injured, emergency medical personnel pronounced Andy dead at the Reading Airport. He never made it to a hospital. Andy's death was a jarring wake-up call for many in the wildland firefighting community. Out of Andy's fatality, a new focus was given to wildland fire emergency incident response. The Dutch Creek protocols were created and later updated to include standard procedures for reporting a medical emergency. This set of standardized procedures can be found in the Incident Response Pocket Guide, IRPG, in the pink pages within the Emergency Medical Care section. Officially known as a medical incident report, it is commonly referred to as the eight line. To help you effectively report a medical incident from the field, the eight line focuses on the required information needed to mobilize emergency resources. When an accident occurs on your fire, first identify who will be in charge of the incident within an incident. You'll want this individual to be able to focus solely on the medical emergency in common wildfire terminology, this person will act as the incident commander of the medical emergency. The person in charge of the incident should gather all essential information and prepare to report the accident to dispatch following the eight line. Line one, declare an emergency incident, request the channel be cleared for emergency traffic. Dispatch, incident 316, stand by for medical emergency report, clear channel for emergency traffic. Line two, incident status. Provide a summary of the medical emergency, including the number of patients, along with the command structure. Dispatch, I have a red priority patient, unconscious, struck by a falling tree, requesting ambulance to Forest Road at 45 degrees, 23 decimal 453 by 119 degrees, 31 decimal 221. This will be the Eagle Meadow Medical. IC is Jones. EMT Smith is providing medical care. Line three, initial patient assessment. Complete an assessment for each patient. If there is more than one patient, start with the most severe first. You can find guidance on the medical assessments in your IRPG. Document the assessment and treatment administered to the patient. Number four, your transport plan. If needed, identify an evacuation location if different from the patient location. You can identify this location by latitude and longitude coordinates, a drop point, a road intersection, etc. It will be important to communicate the patient's estimated time of arrival to the evacuation spot if applicable. Line 5, additional resources and equipment needs. Identify and communicate additional needs to dispatch. For example, paramedic, an EMT, oxygen, a trauma bag, IV fluids, splints, etc. Remember, it's very difficult to carry an injured person on a litter over difficult terrain. Consider additional manpower if the patient has to be moved to an evacuation location. Line six, communications. Identify and confirm with dispatch your command, tactical, air to ground, and EMS frequencies. Dispatch can confirm hospital contacts as applicable. Line seven, contingency. Develop a contingency plan. You don't know if your primary option can be executed or will be successful. What actions can be implemented together with your primary evacuation method? Line eight, additional information. Communicate updates and changes as they occur. Dispatch will confirm estimated time of arrivals of resources ordered. The most important thing an initial attack crew can do to be prepared for successfully managing a medical emergency on a wildfire is to practice together. 
Knowing where to find the 8-line in your IRPG is not enough. Besides the stress created by an actual life-threatening medical emergency, multiple layers of coordination have to occur to successfully manage an incident within an incident. This requires teamwork. To be effective, teams must practice together under the conditions and in the environments where they are likely to encounter a medical emergency. Practice sessions are an easy way to do this. Flag a fire in your response area. Assign a person on the crew to be the injured person. Explain to them the mechanism of injury they will have. On the designated day, have the players respond to the flag fire. It's recommended that you involve your local dispatch so they receive the benefit of the training also. But if dispatch is unavailable, the role of dispatch can be played by one of the crew members as well. Instruct the participants to respond just as they would on a fire with a size up and implementation of the IC's tactical plan, hazard mitigation, etc. Once the scenario has progressed a bit, the instructor can signal to the designated person to begin role playing their injury. At this point, the incident within an incident part of the training can begin. Allow the scenario to progress through the eight line until the medical emergency is resolved through the patient's transport to advanced medical care. After the training scenario, conduct an after-action review. Focus on what went well, what was learned in areas for improvement. Give each of the participants an opportunity to provide input on the training. Share lessons learned with those that did not participate. Practicing the eight line for medical emergencies very well may be the most important training you do. It will make the difference in getting a seriously injured firefighter quickly to the advanced medical care they need.